open source is really all about options and choices. And um, I think before I even go there, it's probably important to just step back a little bit and see sort of kind of, you know, where government agencies have been, what uh, the types of solutions they were, you know, had to purchase in years past. And it was more proprietary type solutions, which were more closed end and, uh, if you will, built, customized from the, uh, from the ground up, which really limited, uh, you know, may have provided a solution at the time, but uh, in history shows it's been uh, expensive solutions, hard to maintain, hard to update, hard to really leverage and take, you know, take, uh, uh, um, you know, take advantage of many of the modern tools that, that are out there. Uh, and available on the market today. So, uh, you know, uh, I think Bob Young, one of the founders of, of Red Hat, really, he made a great analogy. I was just reading this uh, the other day in terms of preparation. He said, would anyone in their, mi in their right mind today go to a car dealer and buy a new car where, you know, you love the car, everything about the car, but there's just one, one thing you need to be aware of, David, before you sign off on that, and that is that you can never get at the engine and transmission. You can't open the hood of this car. And you might say, well, what do you mean about that? Nope, you know, we have the key to that car. And uh, so I might ask, well, how do I uh, get service on a car? Where can I go to? Well, you can only come back to the, our dealership and we're the only ones that can really work on this car. And that's sort of kind of what happened with, uh, you know, government agencies over the years where the keys to that car were controlled by the company that provided those solutions. Uh, the net net is they were very expensive, limited number of resources to take advantage of those. So I guess this, the message to the community is be careful when you go out and buy a new car today. So uh, when, I, when I think of open source, it is open and there's providing uh, agencies, government agencies really, and our clients really with choices. And those choices might include, for example, deployment. Now many, many of the legacy applications were on a server, uh, in a, much more in a client server environment on that computer, and you were limited in older times really uh, uh, to that specific hardware. Uh, we provide our clients an open source uh, by its very nature, with the root word open, provides our clients with options in terms of deployment. So, uh, it's cloudy day today, so I feel free talking about clouds, you know, but not the clouds we see in the sky today over Washington, D.C. that are raining on us, but really, a cloud is really a, a location where your data is, is, uh, is maintained by an organization, by a company like Sugar, and your data resides there, the backups are there, updates are there, all the maintenance that you used to have to do and all the overhead that goes with that um, are now taking, uh, are taken care of by, say, a company like Sugar CRM, or it might be Amazon, or it might be IBM Cloud Solutions, whatever that might be. So that's one option. Another option with open source is that you could have it on your own server, behind your own firewall, if you will, on your own government agency's cloud. Uh, and the third option might be on a third-party cloud. We heard Amazon talking today about you know, the, the growth of their cloud. Uh, Sugar's an IBM partner, and uh, we are we just announcement this week with Sugar available on the IBM cloud solutions. So again, options uh, that we provide the client, the, uh, the client, I should say. Another option might be in terms of development. We have to look at the old way of doing it. It was proprietary de development tools limited number of uh, developers, technical people, really understood the code. Once you opened it up, got under the box, et cetera, if you will, under the covers. Limited number of people which made it, you know, supply and demand, very often you're limited to uh, what they're going to charge, okay? You have no other options, if you will. Um, open source applications are built in, if you will, industry open uh, development environments, if you will, non-proprietary development environments. By their very nature, you have many, many more thousands of people around the world who are able to come in and, and solve a specific problem that a client might have. And many of the more popular applications, many of the Google applications, uh, Facebook is written in a, a, a development tool called PHP, open source, non-proprietary, and, uh, and that's, again, what a company I represent, Sugar CRM, has developed in. So again, deployment options, uh, development options, uh, open source with the ability to integrate easy with existing applications. 
in uh, many of my clients have existing mission critical applications that they've invested in mildly over the years. They just work, but uh, they may have two or three or four different silos of information. So hence, you as a, uh, a constituent, perhaps, or a, uh, uh, a, uh, a citizen, you might call an agency and they might have to make a change in your address or phone number, or whatever it may be, two or three or four different times. Very inefficient, absolutely very inefficient. So open source applications are able to often sit on top of those existing mission critical applications that they must use today and provide, if you will, one source of truth, if you will, one common look and feel, which improves the productivity of the, uh, you know, of the government agency. And going forward, if they needed to integrate perhaps with uh, something like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of the other applications out there. So again, you know, the importance of the uh, ease of integration, the openness to pass the appropriate information with the appropriate amount of security, uh, it also offers uh, our clients. At the end of the day, you know, as we, look, as we look to my right here behind us with Capitol Hill and right down the street with the, uh, with, with the uh, White House, there's tremendous pressure put on by Congress, by the American people, by this administration to lower the cost of IT. It's too high, it's too expensive. And we're not reactive enough to our constituents, to our um, citizens. So uh, fundamentally, open source is far less costly to implement and to support. So if you will, the total cost of ownership over a two, three, four, five year period and beyond is much lower. Um, in the sessions this morning, it was just uh, fascinating to hear of uh, government agencies like the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, uh, Department of Energy, Transportation, Agriculture. Uh, they're all either already using um, open source applications in such diverse environments as the Major General uh, Justice mentioned today in a, in a battlefield to ships to NASA. It's, uh, so it's, it's just, I think, a testimonial to the value that open source uh, solutions uh, provide. I think, first of all, just being a participant in this uh, you know, fantastic event here today, along with our partner Red Hat, is, a, uh, is an example of that. Uh, we're here to share information and work with organizations. Um, you know, we're very cognizant of President Obama's uh, 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 push really to make the government more more efficient, more effective, and provide accuracy. And uh, you know, as previously mentioned, uh, the, the way we're doing that is providing a application that leverages all the best of what open source can provide, and the security and the deployment options and the customization integration. Okay, but. Uh, uh, you know, also uh, providing a lower total cost of ownership. So in terms of supporting it, coming to events like this, um, um, I'm actively working with a number of the uh, very large systems integrators. I had the great pleasure of spending uh, a long time on uh, Interstate 287 yesterday, coming from Dallas back into um, Bethesda at rush hour. And many of the very large organizations, uh, a partner of ours, for example, is Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, uh, SAIC might be another one, IBM Global Business Services, who provide these types of solutions to the federal government. We're in the process of working with them, educating them, educating their consultants, uh, uh, et cetera, so that when they're out meeting with government agencies, they're saying, have you considered open source? Let me share with you why. Here's good examples of uh, great companies like uh, Red Hat and Sugar CRM who are you know, really helping uh, companies meet their missions in a much lower uh, total cost of ownership. It's so important for uh, someone who's really uh, evaluating to keep their mind open. You know, the world, the, 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 the pace at which um, technology is changing in this world is is just amazing. You know, if you think back five, six years ago, I mean, maybe your generation, you had heard of Facebook or so, but, uh, you know, many people did not. You know, who really knew about Twitter, Facebook, uh, and all these other social media 
uh, applications that are out there, and who knows what's being prepared to be the next, uh, you know, uh, next best thing coming down the uh, coming down the road. So, um, I would say keep an open mind because the world's changing, and the demand for information is is absolutely vital. So, rather than, if you will, keeping a very closed mind of, well, I'm only going to look at an organization that you know. Uh, six different agencies are using this and they've been using it for 10 years or so, you're really going to limit your choices. Uh, taking that extra time and exploring and interacting with open source and uh, understand the value proposition and what they offer to your agency, uh, to your organization, uh, may well serve your company going forward. So, you know, how do you do that? There's, there's, uh, you know, again, organizations like Red Hat certainly can, can help in that venture. There's uh, Open Source Institute is another one. There's a whole, uh, you know, a whole, uh, if you will, subsystem of organizations that are out there. Uh, all you got to do is Google Open Source and you're going to find tremendous amount of information on it. Uh, certainly I offer the capabilities. Uh, our CTO is a gentleman by the name of Clint Orm. He's one of the founders of our company. And he's just a uh, really terrific resource to talk to about, you know, about the whole open source movement.